Welcome there. Let's talk about routing folders here. Routing folders are a way to set up quick submixes of groups. So, for example, I have these drum tracks here, and I have, you know, uh, some strings and horns. I've got some vocals, and I want a quick way to set this up. So there are two types of folder tracks, and we're going to talk about routing tracks, uh, routing folder tracks, excuse me. They're much uh, easier to use as they route the audio signal. So um, folder tracks, there's two tracks, just basic folders don't route uh, the audio signal. They just kind of hold the tracks in one place, but we want to use routing folders. So these are great because they're easier to set up and manage. Uh, it, you can solo the entire mix. And contrasting with aux input track submixes, there's no need for solo safe mode anymore with these. Easier. And you can expand and contract and show and hide the entire uh, drum group, for example. So let's talk a little about selecting tracks here. Um, there are a few ways to select. We can shift select or command select. Let's, let's describe those. So I select a track nameplate. And if you're ever confused, I just option click there to select everything. You can just option click to deselect everything because sometimes the tracks are selected. And in Pro Tools, we do a lot of things selecting track nameplates. So I'm going to shift select this entire range of tracks, right? To contrast, that's a contiguous selection with the shift selection. Let's deselect that. Now here's a non-contiguous, so let's say I wanted like every other one. That's with command, right? But in this case, I want to do shift select, and I'm going to follow my little script here. Uh, I'm going to select the tracks, and then right click on the, any of the tracks that I've selected, move to new folder right click here move to new folder do that again right click on the track move to new folder and nine times out of ten in my usage i'm going for a routing folder which routes the audio signal and i want to check this as well route tracks to audio folder if you don't do that it won't route the audio signal and it won't be uh, like a true submix, and you can't, you know, manage the audio signal properly and see its level and compress it and what whatnot. So these are drums. So I want to give it a descriptive name, drums. This is going to do two things. It's going to it's going to reassign all my buses here. It's going to unplug all the outputs from the analog bus, and it's going to make a uh, drum bus now. So all of these tracks now, the, the signal flow. Here's the tracks. I can solo the drums now. And all of the drums are now going through a bus. So this is also a folder name of the folder track, the routing folder track, excuse me. This is a routing folder. I can now expand and contract this. Uh, this is a routing folder. And just to show you a little under the hood, because this is actually useful, in my opinion, when we did that, I made a bus here. Sorry, I was just full of a bunch of junk here, but I did make a drum bus right here. That was a bus that was custom created to route the audio signal right here, okay? So it's a little confusing at first in my opinion because you have the, the folder, routing folder name and the bus name are the same thing, but just know that the bus is its own uh, kind of pathway, almost like a numeric bus, like a bus one, two, like a default bus. I just happen to have a lot of stuff in here because I had a big uh, session in here, so. That's why the, the, the bus is, is populated with a lot of stuff. But anyhow, let's do that again. So now let's do it to all the vocal tracks right here. I select them all, shift select, right click, move to, new folder, a routing folder. This is just going to be called Vox though. Go Vox. And I want to always check the route to, uh, route to new folder. Click OK. And now my vocal tracks should be... Right there. Oops. So I can I can solo both those at once. And then I would just repeat that whole process here for the guitar and for the background tracks. Probably don't need one for the bass, but that's routing folders. Um, and so now these I can... I don't need all my sends here or my inserts. Now these, I'm routing audio signal through there. So if I wanted to throw a compressor on there, for example, I can do that on the whole bus. And it's really, it's very easy to solo as well. So, so 
that's isolated. My Vox is isolated. Uh, and this is contrasted with the old school way of, of uh, setting up the submix with aux input tracks. Let me just show you that to contrast it. Select the tracks here, right click. Now this one's a little bit different. It's not moved to, um, excuse me, it's right here. It's, you go to the output here, new track. And I'm holding on a modifier option shift, which will do it to all these three tracks. New track, and it's an aux input track here. I'm gonna call this one um, horns. Even though there's violin in there, that's okay. So now I'm routing this, uh, as you can see here, these three tracks are all going out the horns bus. So the reason I don't do this anymore, I much prefer routing folders because they made this a default though. In the past, if you solo this, you may not hear it because this is not solo safe. I have to command click on that. Let me zoom in on that so you can see what's going on here. If this is solo now, I can't hear it uh, until I solo save this. By default, when I made this, this aux input track here, um, it, the solo safe was on. If that's not on, by command clicking on it, I can toggle solo safe on or off. Then I don't hear the track. I got to turn that on. So I've moved everything over to routing folders these days. It's a much superior way to, uh, to mix in my opinion. But here is kind of the more traditional uh, submix. These are much more compact as I can kind of expand and contract. I can quickly solo my drums or my vocals. I don't have to worry about solo safing. Whereas this is the more traditional setup here with the horns where they're all going out the horns, even though it's a fiddle. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's going in here and there's no real, there's no quick way to solo these unless I use groups or I have to solo safe. It's just a little bit more to manage. So the folder tracks are just a superior way, in my opinion, to manage these things. And one other thing I'd like to do is color code these. So I'll select these tracks by shift selecting and click on any of the color bars and just give it, give me a nice uh, green shade here maybe, there we go. And I like how the folder tracks are slightly different shades. So let's say I want this one to be purple here. It'll make the folder track a different shade or of that purple. So, um, it's a great way to kind of expand and contract the session. And I just wanted to put these side by side with the folder tracks here, routing folders, and the uh, traditional submix. I might as well just make a, a, a regular folder. So I selected my guitars here, move to new folder, and let's not use a routing folder. Let's just use a basic folder. This is just kind of a dummy folder that just contains tracks. It doesn't route any audio signal. It just shows you that there is, uh, audio signal in there, but it's just a way to kind of logically organize the tracks, but there's no, there's no real logical, there's no real logical, um, sorry, I hit a key command there. There's no real logical signal routing. It's just kind of a way to put stuff in there, but there's no signal routing capabilities. Contrast it with a routing folder where you can kind of I can compress the whole mix. I could use sends on here, but there's no audio signal. It's just a it's just a collection space. So routing folders are the way to go with all this stuff. Anything else I want to talk about? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, routing folders are definitely my preferred way to to mix these days. So just letting you know about routing folders.